So we're going to establish an anchor on this side, okay? Webbing, anchor strap, whatever you're going to build here. We like to use MPDs on this component because they're going to self, they're going to self keep. We don't have to put additional prusiks on these progress capture devices. So put your MPD in here. We're going to ploy upriver with our craft, or we're going to use a line launch application. We're going to show you guys a slingshot where you can send a messenger line across. If you have bodies that can get on this side, then you got guys over there. You shoot a line across, they take that line, and then we're able to ferry hardware, equipment, and rope lines back and forth across the river without ever having to negotiate or navigate this on a boat. Does that make sense? All right. Once that line is stretched across to the other anchor, we're going to do a high strength tie-off or a tensionless wrap on this side. When we wrap um, in river applications, we always want to make sure that we start our wrap on the upriver side of the anchor. So that when that tail comes around and locks in, when this line tensions, it's going to vector a little bit. Does that make sense? We want to make sure that that vector is occurring on the upriver side of the tree. If the rope is coming around the downriver side of the tree and it starts to vector out, it can potentially load your carabiner and your knot, eliminating the whole application of a high string tie-off, kind of cause things to uncoil a little bit. Does that make sense? So always start your wraps with high string tie-offs on the upriver side. Once we got it wrapped, we got that carabiner clipped back on the rope on this side, three to one. Tension this line. Once it's tensioned, you can take your mechanical advantage component off, pull that rope off to the side and put a kill on it, okay? That maximizes our ability to come all the way over towards the bank. You don't want stop points out in here that are gonna prevent you from being able to travel on it. Everybody with me? Okay. Once that's done, you need to decide whether you're gonna run all your operations from one bank or whether you're gonna split up personnel and run operations from two banks. We're going to go ahead and run things from two banks initially, and then we'll talk about the transition to a single bank operation. So we're going to take our craft. We're going to have a static or a dummy line on the front of this craft. It can be Prusix, it can be webbing, it can be a pickoff strap. It doesn't matter what it is. On the track line itself, we're going to have a pulley. We're going to have a steel ring or a rigging plate. We're going to attach the end of a rope to this side. And we're going to attach the end of a rope that's going to go to this side. We're going to have another pulley underneath the steel ring that's going to have a line that's traveling over to this bank and can be prepped to be rigged to a uh, mechanical advantage or a haul system over on this side. It will then come out of this pulley and attach to the nose of the boat. So, when we want to go to the far bank, these guys are going to pull, these guys are going to give out slack. This pulley is going to travel across the line. Once we're in line with the victim, we're going to stop. When we're playing across, the up, up river and down river line needs to allow slack to play out so that line can extend. But we keep that dummy line on the nose of the boat so that when we're ferrying back and forth across the river, that dummy line is attached to the steel ring, almost like a belay. It's just a kill point so that as we're playing out, the boat's not traversing up and down the river. Does that make sense? Once the craft is in line with the victim, then they take off that keeper line, both ferry lines hold position, and the upriver and downriver line starts deploying out rope, allowing the boat to travel down to the victim. Once you've get, gathered the victim, then they're gonna haul up on that line, once we're back in place with the track line, we're going to put our safety back on the track line, and then we're going to do ferry lines to whichever bank it is we want to receive, okay? One of the first upgrades you can put onto the system is you can put basically a two-to-one on the nose of the boat. So instead of running your upriver and downriver line through a pulley and then killing it at the nose of the boat, put a pulley on the nose of the boat and run that upriver and downriver line through that pulley back up to the steel ring and kill it right there. More times than not, that will negate uh, the need to build a hauling system on this bank for the river up and the river down. Everybody follow that? If you've got significant enough current and enough load in the boat and you don't have the two to one on the nose of the boat, a lot of times you end up having to build a mechanical advantage back here 
It requires reset, 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 reset the hole. Everybody follow? Okay, let's go out. Let's build this first application piece by piece, and then we'll deploy it.